Welcome back to Metroid 2 Return of Samus. Last time, we killed off a good handful of Omega Metroids. And the last barrier has lowered, and only one Metroid remains. So we're gonna hoof it down this, see where it takes us. And with any luck, finally, fully extinct the Metroids. Yeah, that doesn't happen. There's like 2,000 games that came after this one. But you know, we tried. We tried. Actually, did only one game come after this? When was Other M? May have been only Fusion happened after this. Because I know the Prime game has happened pretty early on. No, what am I talking about? We even have Super after this. Man, we got like all the games. All the Metroids. They all exist. Everywhere. Simultaneously. Um, so, even if you want to go lava diving, and just go, man, I'm just gonna push through to the end, this right here is physically blocked off. There is a wall in the way if you decide to go down here without killing those three Omega Metroids. So, you have to kill them and lower the, lower the lava, whether you want to or not. I do not know how the rest of the lava works. Like, does it look for only one Metroid remaining for that? Or is it specifically those three? Like, could you skip all the other Metroids, lava dive your way, kill those three? I don't know. I mean, you'd need, like, a Game Shark or something for that. Is this lava? What is this? Water. Still no real signs of life. Water, though, is promising. And we did climb up a pretty fair ways to get this far. And we're kind of only climbing higher. Uh, so do be careful here, there are a couple spots in this water where if you step on it, you do drop down to the bottom floor. Kind of like that. So honestly, just, like, don't touch the ground if you can avoid it. It just drops you down, though, so it's not, like, a big nasty trap or anything. You just gotta walk your way back up. A little irritating, a little time-consuming, maybe. And a save point. Oh, we can go up. Into the bottom of a... What would you call this? A reservoir. That's the word I was looking for. So the reservoir is blocked off on the bottom. Um, I'm sure the remakes, I think AM2R, showed like water kind of pouring down that you went your way up. Man, I didn't realize water was this hard to move in. I mean, of course not. I don't have the gravity suit. There we go. This is a big room. This is a big room. This is a heckin' large room. 
And I'm about to spider ball my way up the side of this. Because space jump is weird. Hey! Life. If I can get above you... Then if I heck up, that's something I can come back to. Bricks! That's not a cave anymore, that's some kind of construction. Oh my goodness. Fine! We'll do it your way. Yeah, proper bricks. That's leading somewhere. So we have a passageway here. There are actually three passageways on the roof. That should be the first one. I'm going to go... through the other two first. And there's the third one. Uh, this one has energy and missile recharge. So, thank heavens for that. This one... Because, boy, would you be a little upset coming all this way and have to backtrack. It's a broken Chuzo statue. With the ice beam. Creepy. Broken Chazo statue? Can you go up from here? I thought you could. Which tells you, and we can guess this by the fact that there are bricks and things here, there's some kind of Chozo facility here. In fact, this is very likely where the Metroids came from. And the running theory is that the fact that Metroids live across the entire planet was not intended. They were in captivity here, in an actual Chozo facility, broke out, and spread into the underground directly below the facility. This is why this is where the oldest Metroids are. Those are the first ones to have escaped. Whereas, going through everything we've reached out to up until now, the weak ones we encountered at the beginning of the game were simply the most recent ones born in their quest to expand across the planet. And we're up to nine Metroids now. There are eight brand new Metroids. And there's one! They're just brand new. Of course they're the larval Metroids. And the only thing that can hurt them is Ice Beam and five missiles. Even though they have to be ice beamed, they aren't they are not nearly as threatening as any of their later forms. Though some of their later forms are kinda weak. Hey there, buddy. 
Oh, heck. Come on, dude. Yeah, if you can hit him, anyway. God dang it. Okay, how many were in this one? In a room like this? Just one? I knew it! Dang it! Man, they latch onto you from like five feet away! Get off, would you? Get off. Far away as that guy was, he probably wasn't. Probably another couple of frames and he would have had me. Okay, still not so bad though. You can bomb them off like usual. Being larval Metroids, few concussive blasts will loosen them up. They're just grabbing on as hard as they can. Five and four Metroids. So if we're looking for newborns, that means there's three left. Oh my goodness. I can't shoot diagonally either. So when he's like way up there, I just can't do anything about it. I can propel myself around the room. Oh my goodness. Can I just like leave the room? Just leave the room, try again. No, you're over there. Dang it. What does it take to get you off of me? Holy heck. Thank you. Boy, the the size of this shot and the fact that they all fly off diagonally is causing me problems. A long room. I would be. I would be surprised if there weren't one more. Yeah, that's it. So the two more are both going to be in here then. Ah, heck. Okay, okay, okay. Just you now. Of course. We did it. And that is anger, is what that is. You can hear it. And we have spikes. A lot of unhappy. That's a lot of spikes right there is what that is. I'm... gonna go heal up. Because this is gonna be... a fight. Back with full strength. We'll see how many attempts this takes. So, of course, uh, many people know what's coming up. This is the final boss of Metroid 2. And one of a few genuine bosses in the game. All these Metroids had to be coming from somewhere. And that would be the Metroid Queen. And that's what's down below us. So, the Metroid Queen actually follows a different evolutionary pattern than the rest of the Metroids. 
it's actually... So most of the Omegas that we have seen, or as far as we know, the Omegas that we have seen will never become a queen. The queen is not the natural stage of evolution. However, we do not know if the queen had to go through the normal evolution stages and did turn from an Omega into a queen. There's a lot we don't know, but not just any Metroid can become a queen. But also, as far as we know, queens are the only way to make more Metroids. Unless they're raised in a tube, I guess, which I'm pretty sure is what Mother Brain was doing. Anyway, let's see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. Hopefully I don't hit all the spikes on my way there. Cool, I didn't hit all the spikes on the way there. Sharp! Nice. So I'm not really sure how to fight this thing. But you want to get inside of it. And lay bombs in its stomach, which makes it unhappy. I don't know if you just have to hit it a certain number of times before it opens its mouth, or what? Why didn't you... Why aren't you swallowing me? I want to put bombs in your stomach! Uh, I'm gonna die long before anything happens. What do you have to do? Um, there we go. That's what you want to do. Okay, we did it. I'm not going to make it. As I get in right at the start. Come on. So you want to get eaten. Do you have like a pattern? Is that how this works? You want to shoot it in its mouth. Which gets it to open its uh, stomach. Or it gets it to stop itself. There we go. Kind of like that. That wasn't so hard. Just a matter of figuring it out. Like, I, I suppose one of the easiest things is don't just pelt it with missiles. I think missiles hurt it, but only minimally. How you really want to hurt it is, like all Metroids, you want to hit its core. And you do that by getting eaten. Just a little baby Metroid. Look at it! Look how cute he is! I'm gonna love him, and I'm gonna care for him, and I'm gonna raise him, and we're gonna be best buddies. Look at him! So we've seen these blocks in a couple places. 
um, even getting here. And though it's never really directly explained what they are, it's thought that it's some kind of... some kind of mineral made specifically to feed the Metroids. So it's a hard crystal, but it's their food. And this little guy just wants to eat it all up. Because he's so tiny and fresh and hungry. Yeah, I want you to grow up big and strong. Eat it all up, yeah. Mm -mm. I'll get these two. Yeah, okay, having trouble making the jump. It's fine. Come on, little duder. Get up there and eat up. Stars! We're outside. We went up a great ways, and we even ran into another Chozo facility. So it only makes sense that that facility would have been relatively close to the surface. Okay, let's go, little guy. We gotta climb up and up. And get the heck out of here. We're on the surface of the planet. Just run around, see what's out here. And that takes us back to our ship. Uh, so, for reference, um, in case anybody's curious, initially, as soon as you got the spider ball, you could try to climb up here. However, uh, there is a layer of some kind of acid cloud or something um, that, if you touch, knocks you out of the spider ball and knocks you back down. Once you have beaten the game, you can see what's all the way up here. I believe once you get the space jump, or maybe something like that, I don't remember when, but I think the acid cloud eventually does retreat and you can come up here and even go over on this side, or maybe the acid cloud never retreats. Um, but if you do go all the way over here, you did see the crystals that the baby Metroid eats in the way. So even if you manage to make it through the acid cloud, or if the acid cloud does retreat, you can't get in any way because those crystals are there. You know, I noticed the baby Metroid doesn't count on our Metroid counter. I feel like that would have been a nice touch if it went back to one. No other... nothing else. Nothing bad, nothing wrong, nothing... spooky, nothing making you feel like you have to kill it. Just like, yeah, there's that one Metroid. And we're taking this little guy with us. I have no idea what ending I'm gonna get, because... Much like uh, Metroid 1, the game does have different endings, where Samus will uh, take off more of her suit the lower time that you get. Or is it based on items? I don't remember. It's either items or time. Um, I was not playing for time at all, so I would... If it's based on time, I would not at all expect that that's a, um, that's a thing. But yeah, um, so I didn't get a chance to talk as much about the Metroid Queen and my strategy in order to take her out, but it ended up being, like, I think missiles hurt her, but... Re if you really want to do damage, you have to hurt her nucleus, just like any other Metroid. And because she's got it pressed against the ground, the only real way to do that is in her mouth. So, 
Whenever she backs up, she's about to spit out the little orbs. That's when you want to stop shooting. I was just flailing the first time. Uh, that's when you want to stop shooting and just screw attack through those weird spike orb things. Just get rid of them. Then, don't bother jumping and trying to shoot her in the face. Just wait there on the bottom for her to come at you. Ideally, what you want to do is if she's charging at you with her mouth closed, you just want to morph so she doesn't hit you. Um, whereas if she attacks you with her mouth open, you want to shoot a missile into her mouth, which then freezes her for a second so you can morph and get into her mouth. So, with that, you can actually beat her, taking very minimal damage, but I wasn't able to tell the difference between her attacking mouth open or her attacking mouth closed or what triggered her to do one or the other. So, I just stood there and fired a missile like her mouth, mouth was going to be open every time. And if I hit her, if I got hit, then I got hit. Oh, 355, is that worst ending? Gat dang it. Oh well. But yeah, you see her without the suit, best ending. But anyway, that is Metroid 2, Return of Samus. Plot-wise, from here, oh, well, I should say first, we've seen what this game has brought to the table. So they took what was in the original NES Metroid, and they said, okay, the crowd wants a game that's a little more structured, a little more linear. Um, they don't want just completely open world, you can do anything at any time. So they brought that down, and they refined it, and they made it much more linear. So in this game, I never had to backtrack. Never. I never did. I mean, except the one time I went back to get health, because there isn't a health recharge in the last area for whatever reason. Or the Omega area, I think, for whatever reason. But otherwise, I never did. Every item that there is to collect, you can collect the first time you see it. Um, so it's a much, and it's structured then into much smaller little areas, where you're forced to complete one area before you can move to the next one. Much, much more linear. And I remember getting lost, so very lost, playing through this game on my own. But that's where you would very much want to draw up a map. Just like the NES Metroid. The game, the game needs a map. Desperately needs a map. But I feel like, simply having looked online and found a map that I can go off of, the game is infinitely more enjoyable, and it feels infinitely more straightforward. It doesn't feel nearly as convoluted and complex and maze-like as when I played this on my own as a child. And some of that is me maturing as a, as a human being, but also some of that is... Having, having that map really shows just how non-maze-like it is. It's the same problem that I had with the NES Metroid. Um, so we've seen that now. But I feel like some complaints that came from this game were... A, it was how easy it was to get lost. Which would very much be resolved simply by having some more... Colors? Maybe zoom the camera out a little bit, and you should be fine. Uh, maybe don't hide things in quite as obtuse places. I think I would like... And I think many people would like if it were just a little less linear. Let us actually explore the world and feel like we're exploring. Instead of, the game was basically stage-like. It, for all practical purposes, it had levels. You beat level one, you move on to level two. And you want that exploration out of a Metroid game. Of course, the game brought... A lot of other things. It brought the design of Samus's ship. It brought the design of the Varia suit, which we can see now, which very much brought Samus into the current age of designs. This The Varia suit was a much more timeless design. Whereas the power suit, the base power suit, it always looked like something out of the 80s. Kinda. We've also seen some new power-ups show up. The spring ball showed up. The space jump showed up. That was the big one. We got the plasma beam. The spider ball 
showed up. Um, the Spazer showed up. All things that were not in the NES Metroid. So we can see how the game has kind of grown out some. Um, there's also maybe less of a sense of escalation. Cap each area off. Give us bosses or something. Make it feel like you beat an area. Instead of just kind of being an exterminator. You go down, you trudge down, you wipe out the Metroids, and then you can move on to the next area. You're an exterminator. For the purposes of a game, you maybe want a little more than that. But of course, we've got a brand new baby Metroid. And it doesn't even want to murder us. Or anyone, as far as we know. So we should probably take that to someone that can make some use of it. Until next time, everyone. <laughs>